Now, after these two ayat, we proceed further. And as I told you in the beginning, yesterday, that a very big chunk of this Surah Nisa, it deals the affairs of the Munafiqoon, without naming them. In the end, they will be named also. But in the beginning, you know, what we call Ruhe Sakhun, although they are not mentioned. But actually, these ayat are discussing the problems that were created or who were being faced by the Munafiqeen themselves. But let us first of all know who is the Munafiq? Who were the Munafiqeen of Medina at that time? There were certain people in Medina who accepted Islam. But they accepted not by thoroughly understanding what they are accepting. What are the implications of accepting Islam? If you are accepting Islam, you have to be totally obedient to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you have accepted Islam, you have to accept it the whole divine law. If you have accepted Islam, you will have to sacrifice your lives and belongings and money for the cause of Allah, for jihad in the way of Allah. These are the implications of accepting Islam. People who understood it, those who accepted it at the face value, there was no problem with them. When they have decided, in We have already sold ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now this life doesn't belong to me. It's a sacred trust of Allah with me. Whenever he demands, I'll just give and lay down my life. Now all that I possess is not my property. I have sold it to Allah, already sold. Inna Allah hashtara minal mu'minina anfusahum wa amwalahum bi'anna lawmul jannah. Now this is, I'm only a custodian. Whenever Allah demands, I'll present it. Now there's no problem for them. But there were people who accepted Islam only because the whole clan or family or the tribe has accepted. So why to remain separate? Go ahead. You also accept Islam, embrace Islam. Or in an only emotional way, something strikes to you. Oh, it's good. I must have it. But you are not looking to the implications. What does it mean? What you will have to do after this? But in that, you know, a flooding of emotion, you have accepted it. But now when the implications come, they waver, they tremble, they start, you know, they are oscillating now. Muzabzabina bayna zalik, la ilaha ulai wa la ilaha ulai. Imam mujhe roke hai to khenche hai mujhe kufr. Kaaba mere piche hai kalisa mere aage. What should I do? I, I have become Muslim. Well I now I am required to go to fight in the way of Allah. Risking my life. Oh. It's not an easy job. Every day the Prophet is saying. Anfiqu fi sabirillah. Anfiqu fi sabirillah. Anfiqu fi sabirillah. Oh but this wealth is very dear to me. I can't part with it. Now what to do? So there were certain problems for them. And these peoples were oscillating between Kufr and Iman. We shall find, you know, this ayah, very beautiful ayah, in the later sections of this very surah. Inna lazina amanu, summa kafaru. Summa amanu, summa kafaru. They were oscillating between Iman and Kufr. Going two steps toward Iman, and then four steps this word. So that there are two steps towards Kufr. Now they are oscillating between Kufr and Iman. Muzabzabina bayna zalik, la ilaha ulai, la ilaha ulai. They were the munafiqs. But still this disease, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also calls it a maraz. Fi qulubihim maradun, fazadahum allahu marada. This is the disease. This disease was progressing gradually. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the beginning he is not naming them, not pointingly. You know, bringing them to the eyes of the society. But the problems, they are discussed here. Later it will be made clear who are they. Now, give these glad tidings to these munafiqeen. These munafiqeen, glad tidings. That for them there is a very painful chastisement. So, but that will come in the later sections here. Now identify please three problems, main problems. The first problem for these Munafiqid was 
how come we have to obey Muhammad in every matter? It's not an easy job. Like I can't sacrifice my ego. Who's he? He's also a human being. In every matter, I have to obey him. Number two, going to Qatar, hard, not ready. Number three, and this was not for the munafiqeen of Medina, this was for the munafiqeen elsewhere. When you know hijrah was made compulsory, because now after hijrah, because the Prophet had to take an initiative, a final offensive against Kufr, because the center of Kufr was Makkah at that time. Now he had to have the offensive, initiative. And for that purpose it was necessary that all the Muslims from all tribes, from every hook and corner of Arabia, they should converge at one point. So that the whole force is there available for the advance now. So this was, it was made imperative, compulsory. You have to migrate, you have to immigrate to Medina. Now people who were at Makkah, for some of them it became very hard to leave their homes, families. They had accepted Islam, but they were not ready to part from their families and tribes. And that was also the case of other people from other tribes. They were scattered, the breadth and length and, you know, of, of the Arabian Peninsula. Now to leave their families, to leave their tribes, to leave the land of their ancestors, where, you know, their ancestors were being buried. How can I leave? How can I go? So that was the third problem. So these three problems will be discussed, discussed now in the coming ayat. Let us hastily finish the first. أَلَمْ تَرَى إِلَى الَّذِينَ يَزْعَمُونَ أَنَّهُمْ آمَنُوا بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ وَمَا أُنزِلَ بِنْ قَبْلِكَ Have you not considered, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the case of those يَزْعَمُونَ Who think, who claim أَنَّهُمْ آمَنُوا بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ That they have believed, come to believe in whatever has been sent down to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, مَا أُنزِلَ بِنْ قَبْلِكَ And also the book that was sent before. Now they claim to be Muslims. When they are claiming that we believe in what has been revealed to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they have become Muslims. But, what are they doing? Yuriduna an yatahakamu ila taagut. They want to get the judgments of their disputes, not from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but from taagut. They want to go to the courts of the Jews. As I told you yesterday, Medina was still, you know, a mixed society. Three tribes of Jews were there. Then all, you know, also Khazraj people had not embraced Islam. There were still you people who, who had not embraced Islam or declared themselves to be Muslims. So there, then there were the Kahins and the sorcerers. Now a person says, I am a Muslim. But he takes his case, his dispute to be decided by a Jew. Or to be, to, he wants to take the judgment from some Kahin. What does it mean? He is not acting according to his faith. He should come to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for all the disputes to be settled by him. He is the head of the state, I told you, and he is the chief justice. Yuriduna yatahakamu ila ta'ut. And what is ta'ut? Please understand. What is ta'ut? I explained last night also. Ta'a, to exceed the limits. They say in Urdu, darya tohiyani par hai. When you know the river is flooding, it is overflowing its banks. Then we call Tohiyani. Now for human beings, the limits are the limitations placed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anybody who is crossing the limits, he becomes a Tahut. He is in Tohiyani. He has crossed his limits. He has crossed the limits of the Sharia. He becomes Tahut. Only a person or an institution or a society or a state which acts upon Ya Yuhaladina Aman Watiullah Wati U Rasula Ulil Amri bin Kum. This is the only exception. Every other society, every other institution, every other form of state is Tahut. And they want to go to Tahut to get their cases and disputes decided. 
الم تر الذين يزعمون انهم امنوا بما انزل اليك وما انزل من قبلك يريدون ان يتحاكموا الى الطاغوت وقد امروا ان يكفروا به and they have been ordered that they must deny and refute taghut not to acknowledge them not to accept them not to get your decisions your your disputes decided by them wa yuri wa yuridu shaitan an yudillahum dalalan ba'ida but satan this iblis he is bent upon taking these people astray and these people these munafiqeen who want their cases to be decided not by muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam but by someone else they are actually they are the, they are the friends of shaitan they are following shaitan